वन नेशन वन एलेक्शन इज अ प्रपोजल अंडर द कंसिडरेशन ऑफ गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया इट इज टू सिंक्रोनाइज ऑल एलेक्शन इन द कंट्री एदर ऑन ए सिंगल डे और विद इन ए स्पेसिफिक टाइम फ्रेम वन ऑफ इट्स मोस्ट नोटेबल प्रपोजल्स इज टू साइमिलटेनियसली कॉन्डक्ट एलेक्शन टू दी लोकसभा एंड स्टेट लेजिस्लेटिव असेंबलीज ऑफ ऑल ट्वेंटी एट स्टेट्स एंड एट यूनियन टेरिटरीज टू ऑफ दम बींग डेली एंड पुदुच्चेरी दि वन नेशन वन एलेक्शन कॉन्सेप्ट रिफर्स टू दि ऐडिया ऑफ होलडिंग साइमलटेनियस एलेक्शन फॉर दि लोकसभा द लोयर हाउस ऑफ इंडियन पार्लियामेंट एंड ऑल स्टेट लेजिस्लेटिव असेंबलीज दिस प्रपोजल हेज बीन इन डिस्कशन इन इंडिया विद दि एम ऑफ स्ट्रीम लाइनिंग the election process and modi government's cabinet has approved the proposal yesterday and it's more timely that we discuss the pros and cons and the rational and potential outcomes of this one nation one election proposal let's look at rational one may talk about administrative efficiency conducting simultaneous elections could streamline the electoral process reducing the burden on administrative resources and the election commission further it may also help in cost reduction frequent elections as we all know impose significant financial burden on government combining elections could reduce costs dramatically further continuity of governance may also be one positive rationale often governance comes to a standstill due to the model code of conduct during elections simultaneous elections could minimize such periods ensuring better policy implementation and also let's look at the pros further in deep one cost efficiency reducing the frequency of elections could cut down expenses significantly related to logistics security and staffing second consistent development mitigating frequent disruption due to elections could lead to more consistent policy development and implementation at both the state and national levels third increased voter turnout a consolidated voting day might enhance voter participation as citizens would have to engage in the electoral process less frequently fourth administrative efficiency streamlining the election process could allow for better resource allocation and management during the election period fifth stability it can lead to stable governance with fewer chances for political instability that arises from frequent elections across different states and now let's look at the cons that is to say the negatives one logistical challenges holding elections on such a large scale concurrently presents significant logistic issues requiring immense coordination and resources two democratic concerns different regions may have different local issues simultaneous elections could overshadow local narratives in favor of national ones third constitutional amendments implementing this would require substantial constitutional changes as well as political consensus across parties we will dwell on this deeper as we progress in our discussion political representation this is the fourth point in terms of the cons it may undermine regional parties or voices that are more localized as national issues might dominate the election narrative fifth risk over centralization there is a concern that it could lead to a more centralized power structure potentially marginalizing diverse voices across states be that as it may now from a different angle look at in terms of positive outcomes okay enhanced governance potential for improved and uninterrupted governance facilitating smoother administration and policy making may become 
highly possible and economic benefits. The saved resources could be redirected to developmental initiatives or other pressing needs. Now, from a different angle, look at negatives, though we have dwelled upon the cons, but again, from a different angle, to have a 360 degree view, let us also look at negatives in summary. Marginalization of regional issues, there is a risk that regional and local issues might receive less attention during a joint electoral process dominated by national topics. Complex transition, the transition to a synchronized electoral cycle requires meticulous planning and execution to avoid administrative chaos. Was it all with reference to one nation, one election? If we look at India's history, the first few general elections post-independence were held simultaneously with the state legislative assembly elections. While the practice continued till 1967, due to the premature dissolution of some state assemblies in 1968 and in 1969, the system of simultaneous elections was disrupted. This disruption of simultaneous elections which has happened in 1969 is continuing still. Again, the same thing may happen once the simultaneous elections commences because how long a legislative assembly or a constituted parliament will stand in terms of the majority required depends on the confidence bestowed by the legislative members elected. That's the reason any disruption to the parliament or any disruption to the assemblies will lead to disruption of this synchronization. So this concept is not new. This concept was well attempted by Indian Union, that is to say Republic of India, but it failed. Now, in terms of future, in 2024 general elections, the BJP-led NDA was decreased from 353 to 293 seats in the Lok Sabha, with the BJP itself being reduced from 303 to 240 seats. The India Alliance, led by the Indian National Congress, and consisting of regional parties like SP, AITC, DMK and RJD which are opposed to simultaneous polls won 233 seats. Since amendment to the constitution requires securing at least two-third super majority in both houses of the parliament that is to say 362 in Lok Sabha and 167 in Rajya Sabha, very little to no progress on this proposal is to be made for the upcoming future. So what? The cabinet that has approved one nation, one election bill on 18th September 2024 may remain on paper given the present numbers of BJP and BJP with its allies put together where the INC and its allies are staunchly opposing the one nation, one election proposal. There, the ruling party with its allies, how far it could succeed with its proposal, which has been approved by the cabinet, is a big surprise for which we all need to wait and see. However, in conclusion, while one nation, one election has potential benefits like enhanced governance, efficiency and reduced election related expenditure, it also poses challenges such as logistical hurdles and risks to democratic representation. To move forward, it would require extensive debate, consensus building among political parties and perhaps faced implementation to address these complexities without which progressing further may become too difficult for the ruling dispensation. Hope the information is useful to you all. Thank you very much for your patient hearing.